welcome to beautiful island of Tobago, home of the oldest tropical rainforest reserve in the Western Hemisphere. It has been declared as the leading ecotourism destination for four consecutive years and has been listed in the Americas as an important bird area with over 210 bird species. Critically endangered endemic frogs, 123 butterfly species, 24 species of non-poisonous snakes, and over 163 species make this area an ecotourist bucket list. It is the primary habitat of the globally near-threatened white-tailed sable-winged hummingbird and the beautiful mud mud. Here's an opportunity to make your next forest visit a unique one. At just 25 US tour add-on, Forest Check offers you the opportunity to have a deeper experience in a globally significant ecosystem measure forest health and support forest management and communities livelihood here we offer you a unique and memorable experience that is only offered here in tobago Develop with funding from a small grant of the united nations development program forest trek offers a unique and interactive way to record indicator species during your next forest walk with your certified tour guide. It's as easy as pie and lots of fun. Interested? Please check with your local tour guide and watch the end of this video. And see you in the forest! Grab your citizen science hat during your visit to Tobago and join your tour guide for a unique and unforgettable experience. Linking education and exploration with science, Forest Check is your chance to collect valuable ecological data as part of a long-term environmental monitoring program that will help to paint a picture of how climate change is affecting the species of the Main Ridge Forest Reserve. How does this data help us understand the impact of climate change on the ecology of the Main Ridge Forest Reserve? Um, well, what is happening? The species, um, like birds, right, they are nesting, the nesting season is changing. Some of them who should be nesting later in the dry season there some of them are nesting earlier so one of these species that you've mentioned is the immortal just tell me a little bit more about how that helps you interpret seasonal change in tobago right uh, the immortal normally bloom is a sign of, uh, of of us knowing the dry season is about approaching it's a sign that the dry season is coming because they are the ones that they were really planted for farmers to, 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 to um, shade cocoa from excessive sunlight. And they always bloom when cocoa is about to start harvesting. Cocoa always harvests in the dry season. So anytime between December, January, February, that's when cocoa has been harvested. And some, sometimes we have immortal start blooming in January instead of being in November, December. Sometimes we have it in November, December. So you will know when the dry season is coming, when you see the start of the immortal blooming. And then if you're gonna have a, a, a kitty kareem, like a, a July, August, August, September, if you're gonna have very dry weather, the immortal can bloom again at that time. So you have an idea that we're gonna have another dry spell coming up. This year you didn't see that because we had rain all winter. So. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yeah.
do you think that it's important to collect this data now? Uh, or do you think we could wait five years? No, I think it's better to collect the data now so you can see what happening going on down 10 years later or five years later because it wasn't just starting now it's something that been happening before okay so it's good to have a data check now so you can know later down next 10 years how things are going yeah now this forest in tobago it is considered the oldest protected rainforest in the western hemisphere it was established in 1776, the same year as the American independence. You want to know what you have in the forest, and the forest check will definitely tell us what we have, what, has, what is feeding on what, and it gives us the population as well. So it's a very good thing. So what bird species do you look for? Well, the important species on Tobago in the forest are the blueback mannequin, the one I showed you on the video, the olivaceous wood creeper, the white-tailed sabre wing, your special, the color chogan, and the woodpeckers. These are some of the major, major species and interesting species as well. But added to that, we also get some North American migrants around now. Between, you can see between August to April, we do get some North American migrants. And Newton, why is it important to look at these bird species in particular? Some of them are only found on Tobago. I think that's why they are, they are, so they are extra important because of they are, you can see they are endemic species to Tobago. Do you think that ecotourism has a role to play in the future of Tobago? Well, it does have a role to play because our environment depends on, 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 on that. And if we understand it, then we appreciate it. In order to appreciate something, you have to understand it. And right now, we still need to understand more of it in order to appreciate it more. How do you feel that ecotourism contributes for you personally and your livelihood in Northeast Tobago and also for communities as a whole? Well, I think it contributes great success to me in a sense that, according to my job as a tour guide, it gives me a great pleasure to encourage the people, who, especially the people, even the locals, to come up in the countryside not just a trace only, to see what we have to offer in terms of nature. Because there's so much nature in, in Tobago that most of the people, they come into the countryside to look for the nature, places like the rainforest, you know? And it's very important to educate the people about the nature. For the community, um, ecotourism is very important in the northeast of Tobago because a lot of people, a lot of tour guides, not even tour guides, but um, People who do food preparation, guest houses, right? um, taxi drivers, right? the fishermen, it's in very important for everybody, not only for tour guides alone, but also for the people who have been in it, that okay. have to support it. So ecotourism really spreads throughout the community, not just with the tour guide, but yeah. throughout everybody? Throughout everybody, from the fisherman to the farmer, Right, to everyone in the community uh, that give their support. Because the fishermen have to find food for the visitors. Right? Um, they, need, they, need, they need fruits, things to eat, all that is a position for the farmer. So it's very important in Tobago, in the northeast of Tobago especially.